Mayor Daryl Steinberg is kind enough to join us live in studio to talk about some of this. Mayor, let's just start. This is kind of a unique approach to a state of the city, these panel discussions. Tell me a little bit about that approach. Great to be with you, Riley. Well, I've given six state of the city addresses and they're usually long speeches where you try to uh, include as many different priorities and subject matters as you can. And what I found was that it's one big event, but it is hard to actually give focus to any one thing. You maybe make one big announcement, then all the other important things get lost. So I thought, why not break this up into three parts where we tackle one major subject, uh, some challenges, some opportunities, and, and, and have me give shorter speeches, which is good, <laughs> and then turn it over to a panel of community leaders and city officials to actually respond to what I have to say. And so we're, we're done with two of them. The first one on, the, on enlivening the live music scene in Sacramento, the second on a, a new emergency response approach to homelessness, and it's really gone very well. We have one more tomorrow. Um, and then um, I'm going to breathe a sigh of relief. Yes, take yes. a break, I'm yeah, sure. For a short time, <laughs> yes. Well, let's talk a little bit about the two panels that you've had so far. Let's start with the, the, the music venues and tell me a little bit about you know the, the purpose behind that. So one of the things that I have really tried to uh, focus on and lead during my time as mayor is to build up the creative economy. Art and every form of art, whether it's music, whether it's theater, uh, whether it's the visual arts. Um, Sacramento has so many young artists and young musicians. And we have, um, and we've put more money than any city in the country from our federal relief funds into building up the creative economy. At the same time, while we've had great music festivals and, and they're growing and a lot of uh, weekend uh, concerts in the park, that there's something missing. And what's missing is the ability of uh, an emerging musician mm -hmm. to be able to find a place to play uh, during the week or, or even on the weekends. And we also have a lot of vacant space in Sacramento. And so we held this event at the Old Men's Warehouse at 700 K Street mm -hmm. uh, that is now vacant. It's going to be redeveloped and used it as a model for what, what we can do if we match these vacant spaces with these aspiring musicians, put them together and have live music on a Monday night in Sacramento. To be able to really do this to scale, we've got to change some of our permitting laws and regulations because um, it's too complicated, it takes too long, it's too expensive, and it's based on an old model. And so uh, it was a great discussion, and now we have a plan to really make it easier while always assuring the public safety uh, for musicians to be able to find more gigs and to enliven, as I said, the downtown, but also other parts of the city where live music, I mean, it's, it's the joy of life yes. and more of it in Sacramento. And is this something that the musicians, will this be um, paid for gig, will they have to, to pay to have some of this stage space? No. I mean, hopefully they're the ones that should get paid. Yes, um, yes. You know, it, it, you, there's so many different ways to do it. It could be existing cafes, mm -hmm. existing restaurants, and the music adds to the overall, you know, vibrancy of yes. whatever else is going on there. And so, no, the musicians need to get paid. now. If there's a sponsor or, um, you know, it may be that there's a permit fee, of course, but that may be paid by the owner of the building. We sure. want to encourage the musicians. You know, here's the thing that we know, that the average musician in Sacramento has less than four gigs a month. Wow. And that was revealing from this music census that we did, and that um, there just aren't enough places. So the other thing we're going to do, we're going to bring technology because um, there are now companies that use technology to actually bring uh, venues, underutilized venues, together with the musicians so that they can be matched up and voila, Monday right. night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we should have 10 different places around the city where live music is happening. Well, that sounds great. Thank you so much, Mayor. And we have to talk about uh, the homelessness issue that was addressed yesterday, this new approach. Can you tell us a little bit about why this approach is different and, and why it might serve as even more effective, perhaps? Well, 
I, here's where I start. Um, when there is a natural disaster in our city, um, in our state, and in our country, there is a regular reflexive response, and that is it's all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. Every part of the government comes together with the community groups, the philanthropic groups. If there's a flood, if there's a fire, God forbid, look what's happening uh, in Maui now. Everybody surrounds the people suffering and uh, tries to repair as quickly as possible. When it comes to homelessness, for a variety of reasons, that's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying apply the same approach. Mm -hmm. So we're going to establish an emergency operations center and it's going to be led by our fire department. Mm -hmm. Why fire? Because they're the first responders most often for medical emergencies and for many crises in the community. They're not going to do it alone. Right. They have big jobs already. But if they're in the lead and we have our Department of Community Response, code enforcement, our police as necessary, um, we can get to more people and help more people get into uh, services, find the shelter, the safe ground, ultimately the housing. Sure. And I think it's going to be a smart approach and will bring us better results. There are no miracles here. This is a huge problem and as I said yesterday, it's not just a Sacramento problem. It is a state and national problem. Yes. And at its core is systemic poverty. People who used to barely hang on with mental health and substance abuse conditions are now finding themselves in the most awful situations. Mm -hmm. And so we have to attack it. We have to attack it humanely. We also have to enforce our laws because people cannot be obstructing the sidewalks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a combination of, of, of the right approaches, I hope will make it better. And you say ultimately getting these these folks into housing tomorrow is your final panel discussion about affordable housing. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, just a little bit of a preview because I don't want to give it of away. Of course, but yes. Here's the problem. Um, when the city or the county, frankly, wants to work with a, uh, pri the private sector to build more affordable and workforce housing, it often takes a subsidy. It takes some additional resources to make it work, especially when you want to create more affordability. We don't have a local source of ongoing funding for housing. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't have an ongoing source of funding for smart, clean transportation. And housing and transportation go together. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about this tomorrow and make a proposal for how we might approach this on the 2024 ballot and, uh, and talk to the voters about um, all of this under the umbrella, by the way, of climate. Okay. Because if we do not do everything to build more housing close to where people live and work, close to the transit lines, do more to do our part to combat climate, then we're, we're not doing right. Because look at the, the, the world is sending us a message here. I mean, rain in August, hurricanes in California, what more do we need to, to know uh, to take even stronger action to yeah. make sure that we're investing in the things that are, that are gonna help, not hurt? Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Mayor. Of course, we will be watching for your final panel discussion tomorrow and following that as well. Thank you very Thank much, you so much for your Reverend. time. Thank you. All right.